After Israel's missile strike on Iran on the night of October the 26th, the media is wondering whether it was a preview or whether the confrontation between Tehran and Jerusalem will now enter a cold phase. As the Arabic branch of the British media holding Sky News writes, citing its sources, Iran received information about the targets of the Israeli planes from Russia several hours before the strike. It is worth noting that US President Joe Biden personally asked Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a few days ago not to attack Iranian nuclear and oil facilities, to which the head of the Jewish state responded with consent. And so it happened. Israeli aircraft attacked locations of units of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, which, according to Tehran, killed two Iranian soldiers. Journalists note the fact that numerous casualties among them were avoided thanks to information received in advance from Moscow about possible Israeli targets. After the Jewish state's retaliatory strike, a representative of the Iranian authorities conveyed a message to Netanyahu and Biden through Arab intermediaries that Tehran would not respond to the latest attack on its territory. How the Russian Federation received detailed information about Israel's planned attack on Iran is not reported. It should be noted that the Jewish state continues its ground operations in Lebanon against Hezbollah and in Gaza against Hamas, both Iranian satellites. The US, in turn, recently attacked Yemen's Houthis, who were also reportedly given the data for the tanker strikes by Moscow. Recall Houthi rebels in Yemen are receiving intelligence from Russia, assisting the Iran-backed terrorist group in targeting commercial shipping in the Red Sea, the Wall Street Journal reported. The report, which cited a person familiar with the matter and two European defense officials, said that the Houthis have used Russian satellite data to expand their targeting of commercial vessels. Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps personnel, embedded with the Houthis, reportedly pass Russia's data on to the terrorist organization, which has been attacking commerce in the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and the Bab el-Mandeb Strait in support of Hamas in Gaza since late last year. The US government, Russia, and the Houthis have not responded to the report. Iran and Russia have strengthened their military alliance since Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, with Iran providing missiles, drones, and other munitions to President Vladimir Putin's regime. The alliance has also entangled Russia with Iran's terrorist proxies, including the Houthis. CNN reported that Russia sent military advisors, citing sources who said that U.S. officials watched as large Russian ships made an unusual stop in the southern Red Sea, where the Russian personnel disembarked, were picked up by the Houthis in a boat, and ferried to Yemen. NATO on Monday confirmed that North Korean troops have been sent to Russia to aid in its almost three-year war against Ukraine and that some have already been deployed in Russia's Kursk border region, where Russia has been struggling to push back a Ukrainian incursion. Today, I can confirm that North Korean troops have been sent to Russia, and that North Korean military units have been deployed to the Kursk region, NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta told reporters. Ruta said that the move represents a significant escalation in North Korea's involvement in the conflict and marks a dangerous expansion of Russia's war. His remarks came after a high-level South Korean delegation including top intelligence and military officials as well as senior diplomats briefed the alliance's 32 national ambassadors at NATO headquarters in Brussels. Ruta said NATO is actively consulting within the alliance with Ukraine and with our Indo-Pacific partners, on developments and that he is due to talk soon with South Korea's president and Ukraine's defense minister. We continue to monitor the situation closely, he said. Adding thousands of North Korean soldiers to Europe's biggest conflict since World War II will pile more pressure on Ukraine's weary and overstretched army, as well as stoking geopolitical tensions in the Korean Peninsula and the wider Indo-Pacific region, including Japan and Australia. Western officials say. Russian President Vladimir Putin is keen to reshape global power dynamics. He sought to build a counterbalance to Western influence with a summit of BRICS countries, including the leaders of China and India, in Russia last week. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, citing intelligence reports, claimed last Friday that North Korean troops would be on the battlefield within days. He previously said his government has information that some 10,000 troops from North Korea were being ready to join Russian forces fighting against his country. Days before Zelensky spoke, 
American and South Korean officials said there was evidence North Korea had dispatched troops to Russia. The US said around 3,000 North Korean troops had been deployed to Russia for training. Donald Trump took the stage Sunday night at New York's Madison Square Garden to deliver his campaign's closing argument with the election nine days away. Elon Musk, SpaceX and Tesla CEO, took the stage at Trump's event, in his black MAGA hat. The energy in this room's incredible, the future is going to be amazing, he said. Melania Trump heralded New York City as our hometown and the world's undisputed capital of industry as she took the stage Sunday, a rare appearance by the former first lady, who has been largely absent on the campaign trail. It was her first speech of the campaign. I'm not just MAGA, I'm dog, gothic MAGA. Well, it's, the energy in this room is incredible. What a, what a, what a great group of people. It's, All right, it's, I've only got one question for okay. you, and then I'm getting out of here, because this right. is your stage. But we set up Doge. Yes. How much do we, you think we can rip out of this wasted $6.5 trillion Harris-Biden budget. Well, I, I think we, we can do at least $2 trillion. Yeah! <laughs> yes. $2 trillion. I mean, at the end of the day, you're being taxed. You're being taxed. All government spending is taxation. So whether it's, it's direct taxation or all government spending, it either becomes inflation or it's, it's direct taxation. Your money is being wasted and the Department of Government Efficiency is going to fix that. We're going to get the government off your back and out of your pocketbook. And Amer America is just not, not gonna, it's just going to be great. America is going to reach heights that it has never seen before. The future is going to be amazing! Good evening, New York City! Hello, Madison Square Garden! Our hometown, where architectural symbols of strength, courage, and unity create a canvas for the world's undisputed capital of industry.